Yes, uh, Coach Grant really lit a fire into these kids. You know, they uh, defensively, they just pressured the ball constantly the whole time. And offensively, Joey Rodriguez really stepped up his game this time around. He really, he, he was shooting good threes and he was playing defense extremely tough. Absolutely. Tonight you're say, seeing a Western Michigan team that they have never played before. What is uh, a couple of the keys to tonight's game for the Rams, Nate? Well, once again, they needed to play uh, pressure defense entire game, 40 minutes. Um, they need to uh, shoot the ball, shoot the ball well, get a little pressure off of Eric Maynard. And lastly, they need to uh, hit their open jumpers. Um, no question. That's something that uh, has been a concern for the Rams pretty much all year, getting that consistent perimeter threat. Taking a look at uh, tonight's starting lineup for the Rams, of course, you're going to see uh, Eric Maynard running the show. It is Eric Maynard coming off an outstanding performance where he was named CAA Player of the Week after a couple of really good games. Eric Maynard and Joey Rodriguez will also get the start. Bradford Burgess, the, center, the uh, freshman from right here in Richmond, will also get the start. Seven games this season. Bradford Burgess has started all seven in the middle. Kirill Pashelnikov and Larry Sanders. So the Rams going a little bit big here tonight with their starting lineup, Nate. Yeah, the uh, the guards on Western Michigan, they they uh, play three three guard set, and they like to slash a lot to the middle of the basket. So I figure we'll put two in the middle, down low, Larry and Kirill, and, uh, and, and try to stop that slashing. We're underway here at the Siegel Center. Thanks for joining us tonight. Larry Sanders moves it over there to Joey Rodriguez. Eric Maynard out front as the Rams taking on Western Michigan tonight. VCU three and three, won their first two, dropped their next two, and then split in Mexico. There's Bradford Burgess, 10 on the shot clock for the Rams. Burgess right now, their best three-point shooter. Burgess, nice move down the lane, loses the handle on it. Burgess is a special kid. He, he likes to take a right to the rack. Uh, freshman showing a lot of confidence. Absolutely. He's been their most consistent three-point shooter. Six seconds on the shot clock. Rodriguez, and there's gonna be a foul away from the ball. So the Rams will give it another try here with Rodriguez under the basket, trying to get it in, and they'll reset the shot clock. Just underway here at the Siegel Center, no score yet. Rodriguez gets it over to Maynard. We'll learn a little bit about this Western Michigan team, the Broncos, as we move along in tonight's broadcast. Broncos are in a man-to-man. A, a -man, um, with the center dropping down a little bit, helping helping on the defensive side. Burgess tried to get it down to Larry, couldn't get the handle on it. It's going to go down the other way. So not even a shot right there for the Rams as uh, they try to move on. You mentioned Anthony Grant, definitely uh, a little fighter under his guys after those two losses to Rhode Island and Eastern Carolina and East Carolina. They played well down in Mexico, especially on the defensive end. Rams are doing a much better job helping out on the um, ball side. It's David Cool, Mac Player of the Year, best player for the Broncos right there, and they're a turnover by the Broncos. Larry Sanders over to Maynard, and then Eric Maynard, alley oop, upside your head from Larry Sanders. Larry's got a big smile on his face. He should, that's a high percentage shot, and the Rams are on the board in a big way, 2-0. It's a way to set the tone there. Winfield with the pass, with a shot, no good, Grow Pashonikov for the rebound. That brought this crowd alive. Good crowd here tonight at the Siegel Center for a Wednesday night here. Sanders out front gives it back to Maynard, and he's going to run the offense. Larry uh, took a little time there thinking about that outside shot. He has been known to fire up a three or two. Maynard over to Larry. Larry gets it to Joey Rodriguez. J-Rod back to Eric Maynard. Maynard crossover in the lane, kicks it back out to Rodriguez. Three on the shot clock. He's going to have to get it off, and he got tied up. It's a jump ball, and the possession arrow goes to Western Michigan. You know, Greg, uh, their three guards set up top. They all weigh over 200 pounds. It's going to be hard for our uh, guards, Maynard and Rodriguez, to, to slash on these guys. A couple of big boys from Michigan and Indiana. That's where most of the players come from, from this Western Michigan team. We're two and a, a little over uh, two minutes into this game. Rams up, two zip. Cool with a shot, no good. Rebound, kick back out there to Martel McLemore. There's Chaptis Gary with a miss. Rams with a rebound. That's Joey Rodriguez, thought about firing up the three. Moves it back over to Maynard. Maynard inside, all alone to Kirill Pashelnikov. He got tied up there, they thought he got pushed. Rams want a foul, but instead it'll be a 
jump ball and the possession arrow pointing to the Rams this time. So it'll stay down the same. You can really see how Eric Boehner is showing more confidence in his teammates. Um, no of the times he just reversed that ball, and, but now he's looking down low. And good look there because Kirill was wide open underneath. Rodriguez on the wing, down to Larry Sanders. Makes a move. Little jumper falling away. It's no good. Broncos with a rebound. This is cool bringing the ball up. And he's a junior out of Grand Rapids, and you're going to hear a lot of from him tonight. Martel McLemore. Over to Donald Lawson. We got a foul whistle. And I think that's going to be on uh, Bradford Burgess. Bradford Burgess on the foul here. Every time there's a whistle underneath, Nate, I think uh, all the Rams fans hold their breath because they're afraid it's going to be on Larry Sanders. He has had some trouble with foul, with getting in foul trouble. Yeah, he's had a lot of trouble. And uh, a lot of coaches are immediately trying to take it right at Larry. Three minutes into this game. Shot up, no good. Rams with a rebound. Joey Rodriguez is pushing it up court. He'll give it up to Eric Manor, who thinks about it for about 24 feet. Decides against it. Now he's going to go down the lane. Kicks it out to Joey Rodriguez. Rodriguez back over to Maynard. Back down the lane. He gets tied up. And it looks like there's going to be a whistle here. Yeah, back to Larry. Um, the way Larry's been playing at the beginning of games is he's holding, instead of holding his hand straight up, he's been coming down too much. And uh, that's the reason he's been fouling. So a lot of coaches have been running plays right immediately, right at Larry, trying to create those fouls. And, and Larry did a really good job down in Cancun of not, Slashing down on those on those arms. He's keeping them wide open and way up top. That's the reason he's been being able to stay in the games. Eric Maynard knocks down his first free throw. So it's 3 nothing Rams. Maynard, of course, coming off a uh, great week. He was a uh, player of the week and the midmajority.com baller of the week for his uh, effort down in uh, Cancun where he ended up with uh, 16 points. Averaged 16 points in the second half of both of those games. He had 23 in the second half against Vanderbilt. They're in a full court press now, Greg. Broncos get it across the timeline. Some substitutions here for the Broncos. Move in close. That's Flunard Whitfield with a bucket. And the Broncos are on the board. It's 4-2 Rams. Maynard with the ball. Maynard Rodriguez, Burgess on the floor, along with Michelle Nikoff and Larry Sanders. Defensive, defensively, the, the Western Michigan Broncos, they're doing a great job up top. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Maynard down into Kirill Pashelnikov, the little right-handed hook, little baby hook from Big K. He gets the bucket. Nice job, Kirill. He's showing confidence down low. We've seen that shot quite a bit from Kirill Pashelnikov. Obviously something he's been working on during the offseason. Broncos break the press. Cool gets it over to Riddell. Riddell to Gary. Now they'll pull it back up. 15 on the shot clock. Lawson around. Trying to run something for Cool here. And they're going to call a block. And it looks like that was on Kirill. Kirill Pashelnikov. It's your under 16 timeout. VCU 6, Western Michigan 2. All right, welcome back here to the Siegel Center. Hey, here's the bottom line. You want to win the uh, Sofa Creations couch potato promo, just put on an Eric Maynard jersey and jump up and down. That's all you got to do, really, and you win. That's all, you, that's all you really have to do. Maybe paint your face. That could probably, that might get you the good seats, too. It's been a uh, solid first four and a half minutes. Uh, let's check it out here. You see Eric Maynard throwing the... Uh, down to Kirill Pashelnikov with a nice little hook. And this is definitely a move that Kirill's been working on. Yeah, Kirill's been working on his game down low. Uh, He's such a hard worker. I mean, it's one of those situations where, uh, you know, all these guys spend time here this summer. It's almost a prerequisite now for it, it, to make that commitment to be here all summer, take classes, and work with your teammates. And Kirill's always been a hard worker. Yeah, Co Coach John Brennan, who's been working with the big guys down low, has done a great job with those, and those guys work hard, not only on the floor, but in the weight room as well. 15.30 to go, Rams six, Western Michigan two, couple of substitutions. Ed Nixon and TJ Gwynn into the game for VCU. It's David Cool there with the ball. Broncos trying to make something happen here. Riddell inside, ball knocked away. 
They've been trying to get it down to Lawson, but have had some trouble. And now, oh, it looked like looked like that should have gone over to the Rams, but uh, it's going to stay down here with 14 on the shot clock. Crowd, a little surprised here. They thought that went out on the Broncos. Struggling to get it in and get it out there to Cool. He gets it over to Gary. Little spin move, and it's good. 6-4 is your, excuse me, 6-5 is your score. Rams try to hustle it back up the other end. 6-4 is your score here. And a three there by Eric Maynard. Maynard's something special. They're, they're back into a press. Little 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. They're going to drop back into a man. 9-4 your score here. VCU with a five-point edge. Riddell penetrates a little, kicks it back out to, to Gary. Gary, another little spin move on the baseline. This time it doesn't go. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Ram ball. 14-23 to go. Rams by five. They're looking good on the defensive end. This is the kind of defensive intensity that Anthony Grant wants to see from opening tip to final whistle. I agree, and uh, those guards for Western Michigan, they're going to keep passing and keep shooting. Maynard. Out to Joey Rodriguez. He's at the top of the key. Maynard over to Rodriguez. He pulls up for a three. It's going to be off the mark. Doesn't even hit the rim. Gary kind of, you see Joey kind of hangs his head there. Joey is uh, taking more threes than uh, anyone, or uh, excuse me, anyone other than Eric Maynard. But uh, just 45% uh, for Joey, but he missed off the mark on that one. I think it just slipped off the side of his hand, actually. The way he brought it up, it just kind of came off the side of his, his right pinky. 9-4 Rams, under 14 minutes to go here in the first half. More pressure, you're gonna see that a lot, obviously, from VCU. They're getting a lot of pressure, but uh, the, the Broncos seem to be breaking that press pretty easily. Drews kicks it over to Gary. Gary back to Riddell, and it's picked away by Joey Rodriguez. He looks like he's gonna move in, but he pulls it back out, then moves and kicks it over to Eric Maynard. Little shake and bake there, but he Dips it down to Sanders. He tries to bank it in off the glass. It doesn't go. Joey Rodriguez, let me tell you, he's not hitting on the offensive side. He's playing defense as hard as he can. So, you know, he may miss some shots, but he's going to make it up on the defensive side. You're exactly right there, Nate, because you're always going to see that great. And he's so quick. You saw how quick he, moved. he knocked the ball away there from the Broncos. His hands and his feet are always moving. 13.50 here, 9-4 Rams. Three ball here. Larry almost got a piece of that. It's off the rim, no good. Ed Nixon was ready to track down the rebound and then kind of a sloppy foul there on Demetrius Ward. So Demetrius Ward gets called for the foul. Already foul number three on the Broncos. Ramsville inbounds here. It's TJ Gwynn as Eric Maynard will bring it up court. It's Maynard to Rodriguez, out to Gwynn. Gwynn to Nixon. Nixon looks down low. Terrence Santiel in the game now, replacing Larry Sanders. Santiel really working hard down in the block. He's double teamed, trying to get some help. Gets it out. Wow, look at the hustle there from Terrence Santiel. Unfortunately, not rewarded with the bucket. Santiel's got to do a better job of finding an open man when he's double teamed. Riddell. Looks inside, kicks it back out there to Ward. And then the bucket, Ward, and it counts, and he's fouled. Yeah, those, that's just a couple of errors by Santiel, just freshman errors. We'll see uh, how long Coach Grant decides to stay with him. You know, making uh, mistakes on both the offensive and defensive sides. You, got, you saw Santiel look over to the bench for just a second ago to see if he was going to get that pull. But uh, it's good that he didn't. Give him a little bit of extra time in there. It's understandable. He has played in all six games. This will be his seventh game. So as a true freshman, he's getting a lot of playing time. It's averaging about uh, seven minutes a game. Obviously, him and Bradford Burgess, new to the program, but certainly Anthony Grant putting them right in the rotation. And it looks like it's going to go over here uh, to the, back to the Broncos. Michael Rudell underneath, looking to get the ball in. 9-6 is your score. Riddell come back out, 30 on the shot clock. 
He throws it across course to Ward. Ward fires it up, no good. Joey Rodriguez with the rebound. Quickly the outlet to Eric Maynard. Maynard back across the timeline to Rodriguez who goes right down the, the lane, but the ball got knocked away and it's going to stay down here. Graham's definitely being aggressive trying to take it to the hoop. Yes, they are. Uh, both teams are pretty much running the same offense. Lots of sets. Santiel out front to Eric Maynard. Maynard around the wing, down to Santiel. Tries to go under, gets his own rebound off the miss, and that's going to be a travel. You know, Terrence Santiel looking a little out of sorts here early on. Just a little bit. Yeah, he's, uh, he's trying hard. He's working real hard on both ends. But just not uh, just making a few mistakes. VCU nine, Western Michigan six. As we've mentioned several times, VCU is fresh off the Cancun Challenge, where they played a couple of games down in sunny Mexico. They beat New Mexico. Excuse, yeah, they beat New Mexico, and then they lost a very close game to Vanderbilt. Anthony Grant, talk to us about the, about uh, the way the guys played in those two games. A great tournament, obviously, Jeff and the whole staff have done a great job putting this thing together. It's a great facility, a uh, great resort. I think it's a, it's a great combination for our guys to get some very good uh, competition and at the same time uh, an, an enjoyable experience. And obviously for these kids having a chance to come to Cancun, Mexico uh, during November when it's 40 degrees back in Richmond, Virginia, and experience this, it's, it's really good for us. Well, yeah, of course. Who would uh, not like to be in uh, sunny Cancun, Mexico? when the weather is a little chilly here in Richmond, VA. But, you know, those kind of trips, Nate, you know, are great bonding experiences. The guys went to Bahamas in the preseason, and that is so important for a young team like VCU. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Coach Grant wants to do that every year as far as go down to, the, to the, those islands because what he does is he grabs those kids and he keeps them in a secured area where they can all bond and all hang out, you know, eat every meal together. Even when they're just having fun, maybe they might be out at the beach, just hanging out with each other, and he really feels that th that pulls them all together. And certainly there are going to be many opportunities for the Rams to go to these types of holiday tournaments because the profile of this program is as high as it's ever been. People know that VCU bring an exciting brand of basketball to whatever tournament they may play in. So whether it's Cancun or Alaska or whoever, they're going to get those kind of opportunities. Oh, yeah, I would agree. And, and, and you know, what, what Rams fan needs to realize is that while we're 3-3, three and three, is that we're playing teams that, that were 28-5 and five last year, 22-6. Uh, and six. We're playing some solid teams that, that are expected to be in the tournament next year. You see, Eric, year. Yeah, <laughs> you see Eric Maynard, who had uh, such a huge effort uh, against Vanderbilt, uh, 31 points, of course, 23 in the second half. Uh, Rams coming up just a little bit short. We're back to action here at the Siegel Center. Rams 9, Western Michigan 6. Look at the pressure they're putting on right here. Brandon Roselle in the game, and there's a wide open look there underneath Derek Drews with a slam to pull Western Michigan to within one. Eric Maynor now out front. It was such good defensive pressure there by VCU, unfortunately, it couldn't convert. On the floor, Maynor, Roselle, Burgess, Kirill Pashelnikov, and TJ Gwynn. Another long three. Eric Maynard starting to feel it from the outside. He is a special player. <laughs> Eric Maynard already with eight of the Rams, 12 points. And, you know, of course, Anthony Grant worries a little bit about these younger players looking too much to Eric Maynard, looking for them every time they need a bucket. But right now, they'll take it because Eric's hot. Under 11 minutes to go. VCU 12-8, 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Broncos. The pull up by Drews, no good, Maynard with the rebound. He'll push it up court. Four point cushion here for the Rams. Maynard fires up another three, off the front of the rim. Rams try to track down the rebound, great hustle there by Brandon Roselle, the sophomore from Highland Springs. Nice effort there. Very much so. I think Eric's feeling a little bit. He wants to come out and take a shot right, right away. Hey, certainly they've had a lot of close games. They wouldn't mind trying to put the Broncos away early. TJ Gwynn cross court to Roselle. He knows how to fire it from three. That's long. Pashelnikov, as he pulled down the rebound, he got pulled. It's pretty obvious there, so a foul. And Kirill's probably going to go to the line here. Yeah, they were trying to pull his shirt off on that one. And uh, coming into the game for TJ Gwynn is going to be Lance Curse. And it's great to see Lance Curse 
in this game. He did not play in the first three games. There was a lot of concern about his health, but he's played in the last three games. He's averaged uh, he's averaged uh, about 17 minutes in these last three games, and now this will make four straight appearances for Lance Curse, and they need him as part of the rotation. Roselle looks down to Pashelnikov. He kicks it back out to Roselle, who fires up the three, bingo! Brandon Roselle with a three ball. The Rams need that, that's, that's a great shot and it gives him a lot of confidence. He's a streaky shooter and when he hits the first one or two shots, he, he can really take it. Uh, Tough foul there, called on the Rams. You're dead on there about Brandon Roselle. That's a guy that the Rams would love to see get hot. And you saw Coach Grant saying, hey, you just did something good for us. You can't just make a mistake and take it away. 15-8 Rams. Talk more about Lance Curse, but again, such a vital player to this team. Guy who played a lot last year as a freshman, and they need him in that rotation as a sophomore. Shot no good. Michelle Nikoff with the rebound. Quick outlet over there to Maynard. Maynard brings it across the timeline. Little crossover there. Riddell is running around. Curse with a bucket. No. Off the front of the rim, but the Rams track down the rebound, and they'll get a fresh 35. Maynard out front. Bradford Burgess. Stop, pop, no good. Rebound. Whitfield. It looked like he might have got poked in the eye. Something Greg, happened there. Greg, I, I didn't actually see it. He's holding his ankle, though. Okay. Looked like at first he may have got poked, but yeah, he definitely did. He's kind of grabbing his knee or ankle. So that's a tough deal. You know, on that last rebound, Curse, uh, it, it might have looked to the viewers that. Uh, that the, that the Bronco went over Curse's back, but the ref wasn't going to call that because uh, Curse was not getting wide. He needs to get wide and stick his rear end back into that defender because uh, the ref will let you do it as long as you don't uh, rebound properly. Absolutely. And you see Anthony Grant give a few words of encouragement to Bradford Burgess, one of the freshmen. They're seeing a lot of time for the 2008-2009 Rams. On the floor for VCU, Maynard, Roselle, Burgess, Curse, and Kirill Pashelnikov. 9-12 left in the first half. Rams with a seven-point cushion over Western Michigan. This is the first ever pressure. meeting. First ever meeting between these two schools. Yes, the full court pressure there from VCU. You see Roselle and Maynard trying to get the trap there. And a wild pass. Whitfield. Almost got him that time. Michael Rudell with a rock out front. Over to Sean Tease Gary. Back to Rudell. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wickfield swings it around to Gary. Little hook, baby hook there by Lawson. Donald Lawson gets it to go. And it's 15-10. Yeah, Lawson was the most improved player last year in the MAC. VCU by five. Burgess with the ball out at the top key. He gets it over to Eric Maynard. Kirill Pashelnikov trying to set something up there for Maynard. He throws it cross court to Burgess and he'll fire up a three, but there's a whistle on the play. And it looks like it's gonna be Lance Kurse gets called for the foul there. A little pushing and shoving underneath Nate. A lot of these uh, uh, other guards on, on the VC Rams basketball team are gonna have some shots because as, as Eric's up top, they're gonna double team in on almost every single possession and so as long as it Maynard finds those open looks they quickly break the press there David Cole with a shot he has yet to get on the board there and the rebound by Lance Curse Curse Joey Rodriguez back in the game he brings it up he's gonna fire up a three off the mark Whitfield with a rebound Broncos in transition. There's Cool. Well, that looked like a little push off there, and he drains the three. And David Cool, the Broncos' best player, with his first bucket is a three ball. Yeah, that was interesting because uh, Cool just did. He got a little push off, and, and they let it go. Lead is down to two. VCU 15 13, 740 to play. Joey Rodriguez being harassed. Lance Curse is going to fire up a three. Oh, high off the back of the rim. And now the Broncos with a chance to pull even here. Cool goes baseline, out the loss and foul line, and his shot is off the front of the rim. Rams with a rebound. Burgess, whoa, a little 
Looked like Joey Wood maybe wasn't ready for the, for the pass there. Rodriguez and Roselle, along with Burgess, Kurse, and Sanders. Very young lineup right now on the floor for VCU. And there's going to be a whistle because Kurse looks like he got hit in the side of the head. And he was looking for a stoppage. Looked like Lance kind of got hit. Yeah, he's, he's hurt. He's hit, hurt pretty good. He's, he's over down here. Yeah, he's down in the corner. It looks like he got hit in the ear because he's kind of holding the side of his head. You can see him all the way down the baseline. Wow. He just said somebody, he, he basically said somebody hit him with a hand or a, or a forearm. Yeah, it made a motion like somebody threw a punch at him. This is, yeah. You need to look at it? Um, they want to look at, uh, I think they want to look at a replay of the, of the foul. Yeah. The officials have come over to the table. Here you go. The officials have come over here to our broadcast position and they want to know if we could show them a replay of uh, that last play with uh, Larry Sanders. Or uh, excuse me, with Lance Curse. They're trying to see if he got fouled. They're trying to set it up back here in the control room. We're not live, we're on a replay. I'm asking them back up upstairs if they can do it. They're, uh, they're getting it right now for you guys. The officials have come over, they want to see that last play if we can, if we can cue it up for them. I don't think they have it, sir. No, Amy? All right. Oh. Wait. Oh, Mr. Fish. Was that it, Amy, or no? Before I call him over here? You can't. No, you can't, you can't I don't think no. you can really see what happened on that play. No, you can't. All right. I think that they were trying to get... I think they were trying to get a, uh, a view of that. Lance... Lance said he was actually punched in the side of the head. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, didn't look like it was in the frame, sir. Sorry. Didn't look like it was in the frame. All right, so thanks for bearing with us here uh, because the officials came over to our broadcast position and wanted to see. Um, we got a great camera crew here it just happened out of frame. Uh, Lair, uh, Lance Kirst thought that he was basically punched or at least told the official that he was punched in the side of the head and the officiating crew wanted to see if that was in fact true. But unfortunately, none of them saw it. The three officials that we have here, Carl Hess, Raina Teely, and Mike Eads. So we're back to action and Kirst is on the bench. Kirst is on the bench, so we'll let you know if uh, he's hurt or not or he's able to come back in. 6.37 to go, three ball there by Drews. And Western Michigan takes their first lead of the game, 16 to 15, they're on a little run here. Three ball by Derek Drews, who now has five in the game. Let's see if the Rams can run an offensive set rather than just take a three. They've taken a three the last four times down. That's nine straight points by the Broncos because the Rams were 15-7, now it's 16-15. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Maynard with a floater off the front of the rim. Cool with a rebound. He gets it out front to Gary. Gary pulls it up to Drews over to Riddell. Fires up a three. No good. Maynard with a rebound. Quick outlet to Burgess. Burgess, a two on two there. He goes high off the glass. Pashelnikov for the rebound. Good head fake and nice bucket there by Kirill Pashelnikov. Nice job to get down the court, Kirill. Full court pressure. Rams back in front by one. You see the pressure they're putting on the ball. Broncos get it across, that's cool. Their best player, only with one bucket, a three-pointer. Down low, that was LaMarcus low, no good. Rams with a rebound. Maynard, looking to drive. Flips it over to Pashelnikov who gets it to Burgess. Rodriguez comes around to the top of the key. Three ball around and out. So no good there by Joey. Riddell quickly up court. He gets it to Gary. Gary to Drew's out front. Cool, looking for an open three. Takes it there, bingo. Cool is really starting to feel it. He's looking for a shot every time he touches the ball. The guy can flat shoot. Now he's got a pair of threes and Western Michigan's up 19-17 with 4.45 to go. I was surprised up to this point that he had only taken three shots. 
He averages anywhere from 15 to 20 shots a game. Rodriguez gets tripped up there by LaMarcus Lowe. Yeah, Joey got a, a little knee to, to the thigh. See if he can shake it off a little bit. So we got some substitutions here. Uh, coming in for the Rams is uh, Ed Nixon. And it looks like uh, he's going to replace uh, Larry Sanders. So on the floor is uh, Rodriguez, Maynard, Burgess, Nixon, and Pichelnikov. Rams down two, four and a, just over four and a half minutes to go. Eric Maynard fronted by David Cool. Maynard brings it out front, lets everybody get set. Shelnick comes up, looks like for a high screen, goes back down. And Maynard, it's almost like he's like, look, let, just let me make something happen here. Drives a little to Nixon, back to Maynard. He's looking to knock down a three, and it's good. Eric Maynard's got his third three of the game. He loves that little spot on the court right there. That's 11 points in the first half. Maynard, 11 of the 20 points for the Rams. Under four minutes to go. VCU regains the lead in a block there. Good D by Peril, Kirill Pashelnikov to put the Rams in true transition. Broncos are in a little bit of a zone. Maynard out front. Looks down low. Rodriguez, I think that pass was for Kirill, but instead of oh. went, to, went to Rodriguez, who gets it to Kirill Pichon to caught the bucket in the foul. I, I'd like to say that was skill, Greg, but uh, he seemed to just throw that up, and it, it was nice. Kirill Pashonikov has certainly found himself uh, in some good positions. They're, they're leaving him down low uh, without really putting a body on him, and the Rams are doing a good job of finding Kirill Pashonikov. Yeah, Kirill, six points, six rebounds. Nice game so far. All right, we're going to throw it over to uh, Kelly Lemon now. Hello, Kelly. Hey, Greg. Uh, of course, we've already beat Union. We've already beat Virginia State. Next up is the University of Richmond, which is a big game for the VCU Rams and, of course, a big game for the city. It's the Farm Bureau Classic, Black and Blue Classic. And, of course, I want to tell you guys all about it. This year, we're going to be down at the University of Richmond. That game is on Saturday, December 13th. Make sure you get your tickets now and help cheer on the Rams for that game. But some interesting things that are going on before the game, and I got some notes here just so I don't mess it up. Um, on the 12th, right before the 12th, um, there's an Outback Steakhouse at out, out, excuse me at Outback Steakhouse on West Broad Street, 11 o'clock. Both coaches, Coach Grant and Coach Mooney, will be there to talk about the game. That's at 11 a.m. It is open and it is free to the public. And then later on that night, Greg, down at Home Team Grill, also from 4 to 7, you will be hosting your ESPN radio talk show. Again, open to the public. So those those events are before the Farm Brewer Classic Black and Blue Classic game on Saturday, December 13th. And of course. If you've been following VC Ram basketball, you know that we're leading that series 38 to 24, and we've won the last four games. So make sure you get your tickets now for the Black and Blue Classic at blackandblueclassic.com. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Kelly. Great job. And you know, says a lot about this Richmond VCU rivalry that ESPN wanted to put that game on ESPN U. It's uh, usually been a night game, but now it's going to be a 2 p.m. kick, 2 p.m. tip. Still in football mode. 2 p.m. tip at the Robbins Center, it should be a good one. The Farm Bureau Insurance, black and blue classic. Greg, something interesting that's going on right now is that uh, that the Broncos have only shot one free throw and, and, and normally the Broncos, about 25% of their points come from the strike. And, and so we're doing a good job defensively by not fouling down there. Absolutely, you saw the uh, bucket there from uh, Eric Maynard, he's got three threes and now Kirill Pashonikov at the line. To, Complete his own uh, three-point play, and he gets it to go. So Kirill, Kirill Pashelnikov right now with seven points. Second leading scorer, Maynard and Pashelnikov have 18 of the Rams, 23 points. 3.20 to go, Rams with a four-point edge. Cool's really looking for a shot. He keeps calling for the ball. Absolutely, you'll see on the floor right now for the Rams is Rodriguez, Burgess, Maynard, Nixon, and Pichelnikov. Rams doing a great job of denying Cool any chance of an open look. The ball goes out of bounds, and it looks like it may have gone off on Kirill. So the Broncos are going to fresh 35. 2.57 left, under three to go. 
Rams by four. Riddell gets it in. To, uh, doesn't quite get it in. Good job, Nixon. Good hustle there by Ed Nixon. Taking a little break on the bench. You will see. You, you will rarely see the Rams uh, not defend every single inbounds, every single pass. That's what they do. They contest it. That's the intensity that Anthony Grant wants to see. And they're, if they're not, then they're not playing in the game. No doubt. David Cool out front. He gets it down to Lawson. Lawson at the foul line. Back to Cool, who goes underneath, and he gets a bucket there. He now has eight points, and the lead's cut to two. Rodriguez over to Nixon on the wing. He squares himself up. Back to Rodriguez, who pulls it out front, sets up the play. 20 on the shot clock for the Rams. 2.20 left in the first half. Most of the offense coming from Eric Maynard and Kirill Pashelnikov in this first half. Maynard drives, a little one-handed floater. It's not a good effort there. Broncos with a rock. See, Drew's for good look to fire up a three. Instead, he gives it back, but it's an air ball. And, oh, they're going to call Eric Maynard with a push underneath. Eric kind of scratching his head a little bit. He might have gotten paid. I, I, you know, he couldn't really see because we were looking at the shot, but... Looks like it was just two guys fighting for, for position under the basket, Nate. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, he's playing as tough as the other as the other team is. Only the first foul there on Eric Maynard. Just over two minutes to go. Who knows if the rest are maybe trying to even it out a little bit. As you had <laughs> mentioned, there was only uh, one free throw so far for uh, the Broncos. Riddell over to Gary. Back to Riddell. And that looks like Cool tries to fire up a three. No good. Drew's pushed a little bit there as he tracked down the rebound, and they'll get a fresh 35, and they're going to be a uh, timeout here by uh, Western Michigan coach uh, Steve Hawkins. I think we're just going to keep it here with 1.43 to go. VCU 23, Western Michigan 21. Again, you mentioned just one free throw for Western Michigan. VCU 3 of 3 from the line. Yeah, as I stated before, uh, Pretty even on the free field goal percentage for both of these, both shooting 35%. You see there, Western Michigan missing their one free throw attempt. The turnovers, VCU actually with five. The first two games they played here at the Siegel Center, you just saw a barrage of turnovers by the opposition. Both the Citadel and South Dakota State were overmatched by the Rams' pressure D, but you see Western Michigan handling it a little bit better, not having nearly the trouble getting the ball across half court. Greg, that really doesn't surprise me at all because they, they do have some really strong guards. Like I said, Gary, Cool, and Riddell, as they play, this team goes. Those three create the tempo on this whole team and they really know how to break this press. All right, back to live action here. 140 to go. Rams with a two-point edge. Riddell has it up front, goes behind his back. He's looking down low to Lawson and the ball gets kicked out. I'm really surprised that Larry uh, hasn't played too many minutes in this game, um, but, it, but it's good to see him back in there. That's good to see Lance Kirst back in after uh, getting uh, knocked in the side of the head earlier. Lance Kirst back on the floor. Nixon goes for the steal, no good. So now the Broncos have numbers, but it is good because they get the turnover. Nixon goes in for the layup, and it's bingo. Very good hustle. So what looked like maybe a uh, risk that didn't work out, it does work out. The Rams do get the turnover and the bucket to finish. And now the lead is back to four. And we're just over a minute to play here in the first half of the Siegel Center. Cools yep. out front. And almost another pass knocked away. Broncos looking a little rattled here. One minute left in this first half. Cool with a long three, no good. Gary tries to come in, no foul call. Looked like it could have been off the back. Lawson's alone underneath, no good from point blank range. He gets the rebound, baby hook, no, no fouls. Wow. Rams somehow come away with a rebound. Rodriguez pulls it out. Maynard over to Nixon. He goes baseline, kicks it out to Rodriguez. Three ball, bingo! Great sequence there for VCU. Great offensive set, Greg. Great offensive set. Once again, they're in the press. The Broncos do a great job of dribbling through that press. No other teams cannot do that. They'd have to pass through it. Joey Rodriguez is on the board with his first three of the game. And now Michigan is, Western Michigan is a little rattled. Long three, no good. Rams track that down. 
five seconds left now. Maynard with the ball, he's gonna take a three. Boom! Wow. Talk about a dagger right before the halftime buzzer. Eric Maynard knocks down another three. He has 14, and the Rams run into the locker room. 31 to 21 over Western Michigan. Let's throw it over to Kelly Lemon, who has Coach Grant. Coach, your thoughts on the first half of play? I thought we played extremely hard in the first half. Again, offensively, we weren't making shots. Shots weren't falling for us. I thought we did a good job on the defensive end to hold them to 21 points in the first half. It's really good defense. Offensively, we got to get into a flow. Good luck in the second. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kelly. And boy, what a way to finish. Eric Maynard with four threes in the first half, 14 points. And the Rams, who were trailing with three minutes to go, have a great spurt, and we'll watch this to end it. This was a great sequence. I think the fans were waiting for a foul to be called somewhere there, Nate. But fortunately, the Rams get the ball, and look at the way they finish here. Yeah, they did a great job. They ran the offense, and, and Eric just did a phenomenal job by shooting that three-pointer. Yep, you'll see right there. Maynard gives it up to Nixon, who goes baseline, but then he kicks it back out to Joey, who makes sure that he takes the long three, and he gets it knocked down. So the Rams doing a great job. 31-21 at the half. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more from the Siegel Center. This Absolutely. is Ramley. Really Joey Rodriguez also had a clutch three-pointer, and the Rams just doing a nice job. I mean, obviously, uh, holding Western Michigan to 21 points in the first 20 minutes is something uh, that has got to make Anthony Grant happy. You look at some first-half stats. The uh, Western Michigan Broncos only went to the free-throw line once, and they didn't make the shot, so that's why you see that 0%, while the Rams were 3 for 3. So uh, we're getting ready to start the second half here, and uh, obviously there was some sloppy play, and the Rams did give up the lead late in the first half, but they finished with a flourish. So going into the second 20 minutes, what does Anthony Grant want to see from VCU, Nate? He wants to continue to pressure the ball uh, and help on the help side as well. He wants his uh, defense to not only pressure full court, but when the ball gets reversed, you make sure that you help. The, the Broncos have done a great job on the help side defense on their side. Let's see if the Rams can do it. All right, we're back to action here in the second half of the Siegel Center. VCU and Western Michigan, first ever meeting between these two schools. That's Gary, spin move inside, off the back of the rim. No, and then a block by Larry Sanders. Tracked down by David Cool. He was a leading scorer for the Broncos in the first half with eight. There's Whitfield off the glass and good. And the Broncos strike first here in the second half to cut the lead and get it back under the double digits. 31-23. On the floor for VCU is Rodriguez, Mayner, Burgess, Kirill Pashelnikov, and Larry Sanders. Burgess with a rock up front. He gets it over to Joey Rodriguez. Pashelnikov was the second leading scorer for the Rams. Loses the handle, kicks it out to Burgess, who swings it over to Rodriguez. He drives, lay in good. Joey Rodriguez, off to a good start there, going right to the hole. Good aggressive play. Great aggressive play. You know, Larry on the defensive end, we've got to watch him again. He doesn't have any fouls this game, and now he's just going straight up every time. It's almost like he's trying not to to, to block the shot. And the pick there by Bradford Burgess, brings it across the timeline, gives it up to Sanders. They lose the handle, and it looks like it's gonna stay down this end. Good play there by Bradford Burgess to uh, get the steal. You know, Greg, back to that point about Larry Sanders, it's, it's really interesting because you could tell that he's purposely just standing straight up and not even jumping off the ground when, you know, two games ago, he would be all over his defender. I mean, his the, the offensive guy. So he's thinking too much? I, I think so, I think so. Rams back up 10, 33-23. Early in the second half here at the Siegel Center. Eric Maynard looks down to Kirill Pashelnikov. He had seven in the first half. Off the glass there, no, but looks like he's gonna go to the line. Kirill Pashelnikov had a very nice first half with seven points and six rebounds. You know, Coach Grant in the locker room must have told these kids to, that immediately we come out, we've been shooting too many threes, we need to push the ball down low so we can take the defenders and push them down low as well. If we can bring our big men down, then that's gonna bring the, the guards down as well and open it up for the outside shot. Shelnikov knocks down his first free throw of the second half, he had one in the first half, so he's even right now. Again, not a lot of free throw shooting in the first half. Rams went the line three times, knocked down all three and the Broncos 0 for 1, Pashelnikov for the second, bingo. So Kirill Pashelnikov, nine points on the night, and the Rams are up 12. 
You see the pressure. And a steal, Pashelnikov to Sanders. Spin move, tries to get it back out. And they get the handle, and I think you're gonna see a foul here called on, on the Broncos. You hear the crowd because Pashelnikov went ahead and shot the ball and it went in. But uh, you're gonna see a foul called here. And it's gonna go, uh, they're gonna- I think they called it ball. on McLemore. Dead ball underneath, Maynard will get it in, but again, the, the defensive pressure forcing the turnover, and that's what Anthony Grant loves to see. Maynard underneath. And they wanna make sure these guys get set and aren't pushing and shoving. You know, Greg, they, they, they switched up that press a little bit. They went from more of a man-to-man -man full court pressure to more of a zone, uh, and I think it confused the Broncos a little bit. Maynard looks to get it in. He does to Burgess. Burgess, little floater down the lane, and it's good. Bradford Burgess, his first bucket of the game for the freshman right here in Richmond. VCU up 14 now. Broncos get it across. That's David Cool with the ball. He's their best player and leading scorer. He had eight in the first half. Cross to Gary. He goes down the lane, and that was actually not a shot. That was a pass to Whitfield, and he knocks it down. So Flunard Whitfield with a bucket, he has six, leads down to 12. Once again, Greg, that's, that's Larry that, that's being a little bit too cautious. He does not have any fouls. He needs to take those chances every once in a while. He's gotta start thinking a little bit more. Rodriguez comes off the screen, knocks down the jumper. And it looks like J-Rod is starting to feel it a little bit. Joey Rodriguez now has seven. Rams back up 14. Broncos break the press, that's Whitfield off the front of the rim. And Cool gets the rebound, but Larry Sanders gets the block, and the Rams are in transition. There's Maynard, goes right down the shoot. He kicks it out to Rodriguez, swings it over to Burgess, and now it looks like they may pull it back out. Maynard whips it over to Rodriguez, and Joey Rodriguez, check it out, he's got the hot hand. Coach Grants is, is tightening it up the D. Three ball, Rodriguez now has 10 points. Joey Rodriguez is getting hot here in the second half. I'm not surprised they took that timeout. It's probably one or two possessions prior to that they should have taken that timeout. Well, certainly the Rams started the half with a 10 point lead. It is now up to 17. Wow, that, was, right. just, that was just phenomenal sequence. The coach right. Grant is in the middle of the court teaching Larry right now how to play bigger than he is. Hey, you'll see the sofa creations, couch potato of the game, this young man. Gonna try to fire up the shot here from his seat, and if he knocks it in, it would have been a uh, $250 gift certificate to sofa creations. It's the holiday spirit, so we give him another crack at it, and he's not able to do it. Oh, oh, third time the charm? Wow. Folks at VCU are generous people. They want the kid to make it, and oh. Good try, though, good try. Still got the best seat in the house there with the sofa creations couch potato of the game. Again, to your point, Anthony Grant, of course, as much as he's pleased with the 17 point lead, he's always looking for a teaching moment. And we saw that as they broke for the half. Let's go back to the replay here and you'll see, try to track down the rebound. David Cool going for the shot, but look at Larry right here with a block, Nate. Boom, his second of the game, starts transition and it'll finish with Joey Rodriguez, who clearly his confidence is boosted now. Very much so, and, and you see Larry, and th that's the first time that we saw him, hey, I'm a shot blocker, I'm gonna go after that shot. Rams moving around a little bit, but ultimately it ends up with Joey Rodriguez uh, taking a shot, and Joey Rodriguez with a couple of buckets early here in the second half. Uh, Joey Rodriguez in the last three ball games has really stepped up his game in Cancun. If Eric Maynard, I know Eric Maynard played out of his head that during that series down there during those two games but Joey was the key to those ball games he really was he stepped up to shooting no question Joey Rodriguez right now with 10 points and the Rams with a 17 point cushion and this is a critical point in the game you say okay wait a second Greg it's 17 but this is where the Rams look to put the pedal on the metal step on the neck pull away and blow these guys out that's what they're looking to do right now yes they are and expect them to keep running that pressure full court pressure all right, back on. Rodriguez, Maynard, Burgess, Sanderson, Pashelnikov on the floor for VCU. Rams by 17 against Western Michigan. 
third home game of the season. Rams won their first two, looking to make it three on the year. Drews down to Whitfield. Little one-hander, it's good. Flunard, Whitfield has a couple of buckets in the second half. He has eight for the game. Yeah, uh, coach of uh, the Broncos made sure that he uh, talked to his players and said, hey, let's go back to what, we're, what we can do. Let's get the ball down low and put it in the bucket. Sanders down low, good spin move there by Larry Sanders. His second bucket of the game, he's got four points. Nice move there by Larry. Larry forgot that he was in a full court press. Broncos do get it across. Drews with the ball. He goes down the lane, a little spin move of his own, kiss off the glass and good. And that's Derek Drews, he now has seven. And the lead is 15. 15.37 to go. Rams by 15, a wide open Larry Sanders. That's a high percentage shot with a flush. Very much so there. Now he's back in that full court pressure. Just a defensive breakdown there by the Broncos who left Larry Sanders all alone underneath. Cool with the ball. Rams have done a great job limiting the amount of looks that David Cool gets, the Broncos' best player. Gary goes baseline, tries to get the bump, but no good. Second time up, he will get the foul. And Shantese Gary will go to the line. I think that looked like it might have been on Larry Sanders. It was. We're going to get the under-16 timeout right, here. Back. The Ram replay in the Siegel Center. And the Rams up 17 in this game, 46-29 to 29 on Western Michigan. And, boy, the Rams doing a really good job of just shooting the lights out, Nate. They're shooting the lights out is right. They're 53% from, from the field today and 50% and from three-point range um, with only five turnovers. They're doing a hell of a job. Um, three blocks um, and five steals. Yeah, seven three-pointers for the VCU Rams. Of course, Eric Maynard had four in the first half, but in the second half, it's been Joey Rodriguez catching fire, and he's kind of boosted the Rams. He's yeah. their second leading scorer right now with uh, 10 points. But you see Eric Maynard here early on knocking down a three. That was from the first half. And Eric Maynard, of course, doing a really nice job of getting the Rams off to a good start. They had a 10-point uh, cushion. That was just before the half he made that. And uh, actually, Eric Maynard not on the board yet in the second half. But you know what? Other people starting to pick up... Uh, the offensive production for VCU. And it's not surprising that it's Joey Rodriguez at all. Um, once again, he's just been phenomenal in the last three games. And, and let's just say, let's just hope that, that he can stay this way throughout the season. Shantese Gary on the line for Western Michigan. He knocks down the first. He'll get another. Crowd into it here. Good crowd here at the Siegel Center. Of course, they're getting great student support. Gary misses the second. Sanders tracks down the rebound, quickly gets it to Maynard, who flips it over to Joey Rodriguez. Oh, somebody called a fire marshal. He is on fire. <laughs> and look at the steal here by right. Eric Maynard, off the defensive pressure. Flips it down to Larry Sanders. Oh, and the Rams are just sticking it to the Broncos of Western Michigan. The lead now 21. And they're not letting up. They have three, three guys in the backcourt defending. Pressure in the ball, pressure in the ball. They're, They're doing a great job. Finally get it across, of course. What a great sequence there. The three by Rodriguez, and then the steal by Maynard, which led to the easy bucket by Sanders. And that's why we have it 51 to 30 right now. VCU, and we had talked about stepping on the neck, putting the pedal to the metal. That's what the Rams are trying to do. Put this game out of reach right now. David Cool with a three and he stops the bleeding momentarily. Absolutely great shot by Cool, but he was guarded. He, that was lucky to make that shot. That's why he's the MVP of their league. But, but once again, that was great defense. He's gonna make those shots, but if you keep that defense up, he's not gonna make those all the time. Cool now has 11, under 14 minutes. Lead back to 18. Lance Curse in the game, along with Burgess and Sanders. Backcourt of Rodriguez and Maynard for the Rams. Five seconds on the shot clock. Somebody's gonna have to get off the shot. Sanders, the jumper, no good. Whitfield with the rebound. I think they're gonna call Bradford Burgess on that foul. That wasn't a good possession by, by the Rams. They let the shot clock get down way too low, Nate. Yeah, they did, but, but I'm sure Larry was happy because he got to take that little <laughs> jump shot. You know, uh, <laughs> it never fails that those big guys <laughs> love to take a three when they get a chance. Yeah. 
more pressure here from VCU. Broncos get it across. Michael Rudell there to Cole. They look down to Whitfield. 15 on the shot clock. Cole flips it down to Drews in the lane. Kicks it out to Rudell. And that rims in and out. The rebound and stick back there by Flunard Whitfield. And they quickly call a timeout. And that's a good timeout there. They got two straight buckets. And then they call a timeout because the lead's down to 16. Yeah, let me explain something. Let's, uh, let me just see if we're uh, throwing it over to, it was a 30 second timeout, that was not a full timeout? I thought we were throwing it over there too, uh, but we'll keep it here, that was just a 30 second timeout. So it was a strategic timeout there by the, uh, Steve Hawkins, the head coach, because obviously the lead was 21, they were able to get two quick buckets, the three and then the two, and then they call a timeout and say, okay, listen, we've stemmed the tide for a little bit. Let's get back into it. But here, you'll see this great sequence by the Rams as uh, Maynard kind of got things started here, kicking it out over to Joey Rodriguez, who really is uh, carrying the Rams uh, early on in the second half. Yeah, one of the things that I'm sure they were talking about was the, was the press. And the reason that the, the Broncos were were beating the press earlier was because uh, we were running more of a man straight pressure at them. When we dis when we made them run a zone where they had to pass through it, it became a, a little bit more difficult for the for the Broncos to get through there. Rams cross the timeline. Maynard kind of floats it up to Pashelnikov, and he can't get into the first try. Second time's the charm for Kirill Pashelnikov, who now has 11 points in this game. And the lead goes back to 18. Broncos break the press. Cool's in the corner. Fronted by Pashelnikov. Gets it down to Wickfield. Back to Cool. Fires up a three. No good. Pashelnikov tries to track down the rebound. Everybody's on the floor. Great hustle by Pashelnikov. But he gets it back to Cool, who goes up for the shot. And you're going to see a foul. But honestly, that was very good hustle by Kirill Pashelnikov. It was great hustle. Uh, the only mistake he made was not, not either calling a timeout or just holding on to the ball and, and, and not try to push it underneath his own basket like that. He got, uh, you know, it's funny, he got possession of it and thought he had a clear shot to get it out. Unfortunately, it went right to David Cool, who took it to the hole, and now Cool's at the line, and he knocks down the first. And we have not seen very many Bronco free throw attempts in this game. No, not at all. This is, uh, will be their fourth, or one of the... Uh, one of four right now. David Cool. Now they're three of five. Two of four and then three of five. So David Cool normally lives by the free throw line and then today only two shots from the from the stripe. 13 points for Cool. The lead is 16. Just over 12 minutes left in this game. VCU 53, Western Michigan 37. Mainer. Waiting for some movement. Gets it to Lance Curse, who comes out front. Curse slips a little, loses the handle. Now they're on the floor, and you see Gary gets possession, and he does call a timeout because the possession arrow was pointed towards VCU, so that was a very heads-up play there by Sean Teese Gary. Yeah, it looked as if there must be some sweat or some kind of moisture on the, on the floor there. They're, uh, yeah, they're definitely uh, going to the towels. This is just the 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here at VCU. Of course, the Rams only have a couple of games here in the next couple of weeks. On Saturday, the 6th, they have William & Mary, their first CIA game. And then, of course, they've got exams, so you won't have any games until the Farm Bureau Insurance, black and blue, classic, their annual showdown with the Richmond Spiders. It'll be at the Robbins Center this year. So again, December the 13th, it's a 2 p.m. tip, and normally this is a night game, but ESPN said, we want to put this baby on TV, so it's going to be on ESPNU. That's why it's a 2 o'clock tip, and it's great exposure for the Rams and, uh, and the city of Richmond. Yeah, these next few games coming up are, are something else. This game coming up uh, on Saturday at William & Mary, you can't, you got to believe that the Rams are going to be psyched for that game. All right, let's uh, go back to action here. Broncos with the ball. Trying to cut into this big Rams lead. Shot by Drews, good. You know, Derek Drews has a nice touch from the outside. 
He sinks another three. He's got 10 points, and this leads down to 13. At one point, it was 21 for the Rams, but now it's down to 13. So the Rams trying to get the cushion back. Maynard goes hard to the hole, and he's fouled. Yeah, I think I think Maynard had enough, actually. I think he decided that he needed to take, a, take the ball in his own hands and see what he could do. Well, Eric Maynard had not scored, to, uh, has not scored yet in the second half. So, of course, you could see him wanting to do that. We got a media timeout here. Hey, uh, who doesn't like uh, free burritos from Kudoba? That's what the uh, cheerleaders are doing right now. Nice promotion here. The uh, fans are hungry, and the Rams are hungry for uh, more points. You know, they feasted early on here. They had that 21-point lead, Nathan, but you got to give it to the Broncos, showing some heart, not rolling over, and get it back to 13. We mentioned the Rams would have had a lot of close games. They wouldn't mind if they could uh, blow one out, but they're going to get a battle from the Broncos. Oh, they sure will, and I, I think maybe that uh, the Rams maybe settled down a little bit too much and allowed the Broncos to get right back in. Uh, this team was picked first in their conference this season, and so don't expect that two and five team to roll over. They, they're going to win some ball games this year. They've got, they've got some players on their team that, that are not going to give up, and they're going to keep fighting down to the end. VCU is actually the second CAA team that uh, the Broncos are playing this year. Back on November 15th, they lost in overtime to Hofstra, 71 to 68. Rams uh, shooting well here in the first half, uh, or, or, or excuse me, shooting over well, uh, very well for the game, over 54% and eight of 15 from three-point land. You know, Greg, they lost one game to Clemson by, by I believe, 23 points. The other combined games by a total of uh, 18 points. They're 18 points away from being six and one. So they're not a team that's gonna give up. Eric Maynard's gonna go to the line. He has yet to score in the second half. He had 14 in the first half, including four threes. But Maynard looking to get on the board here in the second half. It's obviously a very good free throw shooter, and he knocks that first one down. So he's on the board in the second half. The senior out of Rayford, North Carolina, coming off two big games down at the Cancun Challenge in Mexico for his efforts, named CAA Player of the Week. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not going to be the last time he's going to get that honor this year, Nate, right? CAA uh, Player of the Week. He's going to be getting it very many, a lot of times. 16 points for Eric Maynard and a 15 point lead for the Rams. 11-11 left in this game. On the floor for VCU is Maynard, Roselle, Nixon, Kurse, and Pashelnikov. Cool kicks it over to Drews. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Whitfield, five seconds on the shot clock. He clicks it out to Rudell, still no shot, one second. And that looks like it's going to be a shot clock violation. Excellent defense by the Rams. Excellent, excellent defense by the Rams. They pressured on the perimeter, and they just kept the pressure. They didn't allow those guards to slash. So that's exactly what Anthony Grant likes to see. 15-point lead and the chance to add to it here. Some pressure from the Broncos. They Rams get it across. That's Nixon. Drive, kicks it out to Brandon Roselle for the three. Off the rim and no. There's going to be a push underneath, and it looks like it's going to be on. Yeah, it's going to be on cool. Just the 14 fouls. So we're not in the bonus just yet, but uh, and that's cool's first. Nixon with the inbound. Michelnikov to Maynard. Maynard with a rock, He's getting some attention. Gets it over to Roselle. Roselle going to drive, kick out to Nixon. Nixon looks inside, kicks it out to Lance. Lance Curse loses the handle. David Cool picks it up. It's a two on two. Cool. Oh, looked like he might have shoveled his feet there a little. Whitfield with the uh, throws it up with the right hand. No, he kicks it back out. Cool thinks about a three. He drives, loses the handle. Drews now from three. No, Pashelnikov with a rebound. Once again, they're just playing phenomenal defense. Eric Maynard, get things going for VCU. Curse with a three from straightaway center. That's Lance Curse, first bucket of the game. It's a long three that puts VCU up 18. That has got to do a lot for Lance. Cool, quickly up court, and he matches with a two of his own. David Cool 
Really a one-man show for Western Michigan. He has 15. Hey, they just push her. You, they get scored on, they, they immediately push the ball up the court. Maynard stops, pops, drops a bucket there. He has 18. Now they're trading buckets. The lead's back to 18. Just over nine minutes to go in this game. VCU has led by as much as 21 in the second half. A block by Lance Kirsch, who's starting to pick up his game here. Maynard on the transition, goes to the hole, floats one up, and he can't get it to fall. And once again, I think uh, Eric's decided that it's time to, to take over the game a little bit and uh, take it to the basket. You know, he was, he was settling for some three-point shots because that's all they were giving him at the, at previously. Now they're not doubling him as much because he's finding the open man. And so now that they're not doubling him, he can, he can go straight to the basket. You see the replay here, and there's Lance Curse with his first bucket of the game. Again, Lance Curse did not play in the first three games. He had an injury. And Anthony Grant really was not sure when he was going to come in. He just kept saying he's day to day, he's day to day. Well, he's played now in the last four games. He's averaged about 17 minutes, and uh, Lance Kirsch gets on the board. But uh, mass substitutions here for the Rams. Maynard's at the line. But they substitute the other four. So now on the floor, Roselle, Burgess, TJ Gwynn, and Larry Sanders as Maynard tries to knock down the back end of this one and one and uh, doesn't go. So Maynard with 19 in the game, and the Rams by 19. Broncos quickly up court, and that's David Cool finishing the fast break with a lay-in. He has 17, the lead is 17. Gregory, that was about one of the first times that I saw them break down on defense on a, on a made, on a miss pass, excuse me. Maynard getting double teamed, throws it over to Burgess. Roselle from three, no. Gwynn tries to knock the rebound away, but he can't. So now the Broncos in transition again, trying to cut in into the Rams' lead. And there's Riddell high off the glass. Nice move by Michael Riddell, his first buckets of the game. You can see where Roselle, he, he was a little bit shy, and he just hasn't gotten the flow of the game and uh, was a little hesitant to take that shot. Fifteen is the lead here. Missed shot, Broncos. Look down low there to Lawson. Lawson kicks it out to Riddell. Riddell back to Lawson. Tries to back in Larry Sanders and he gets the right hand to go. Donald Lawson has a couple of buckets. And the lead now down to 13. The Broncos have decided to, to start pushing it down a little bit low to open up their shot from the outside there, Greg. Maynard. Lays it in with the right hand. Eric Maynard now has 21 in the game. Seven in the second half. Gets that lead back to 15. And again, you just see a lot of running. When both teams make a basket, they're pushing it right up court. There's David Cool with a three. And it's really now David Cool versus Eric Maynard. David Cool now has 20. Eric Maynard has 21. But it's the Rams with a 12-point lead, 63 to 51. Let's throw it over to Kelly Lemon. You've already segued me into this segment. I guess that's the right way to say it, Greg. But we're going to talk a little bit more about Eric Maynard. It is Eric Maynard madness. And of course, there's a, a couple of things that have happened, you know, since the last Ram replay. Of course, they went down to East Carolina, unfortunately lost in overtime. But Eric had a career high game of 35 points. Then they went to Cancun, and you've talked about this a little bit more. And he made all team honors, excuse me, all conference, I mean, excuse me, all tournament honors at the Kiaku Challenge. And then on Monday, he got CAA Player of the Week and then Mid-Majority Baller of the Week. So we'd like to congratulate Eric Maynard for his success throughout this season. And of course, I'm sure we're going to be talking about him more and more and more. Back to you guys. All right, Kelly, you got that exactly right. Eric Maynard, we were just saying, I'm sure it's not going to be the last time he gets CAA Player of the Week. And uh, I like Mid-Majority Baller <laughs> of the Week. I like that one. I like that, uh, I like that award. Uh, of course, Eric Maynard has gotten so much attention nationwide. When you hit a big shot like he did against Duke in the NCAA tournament, that's gonna come, but he's earned every single accolade that he has received. Back to game action, just over seven minutes left in this game. And VCU has a 63-51 lead and a bit of a sloppy possession. The ball gets knocked away. And we're gonna have another timeout here on the floor. So I think we're gonna probably keep this one here. We'll keep this one here. 
as uh, we uh, see the VCU dance team uh, take the floor. But what we can tell you is that is not the way they wanted to come out of that timeout. Uh, Joey Rodriguez lost the handle a little bit there, a turnover by VCU. And again, they've led by as many as 21 in this second half, but unfortunately the lead now just 12. And uh, they've had a chance to put this Bronco team away, but unfortunately, they're a feisty group. That's true, that's true, Greg. That last time out that they took um, was, was just so Coach Grant could stress defense again because they had a, a few lapses on defense and he wanted to take that, that time to just say, hey, calm down, you need to put some pressure on the ball. They're, they're getting buckets in transition now and they hadn't had any in the first half. And so that may be one, they're either getting a little tired or two, they're just not putting the effort in that they need to put in. So he needed to remind them that they needed to. Well, you know, Anthony Grant, I had him on uh, my radio show this week, and he had talked about how it's just a young team, and, 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 and they need experience. They need reps. If it was a baseball team, he'd say they needed bats, right? <laughs> I mean, they just need reps. That's what they need, and, and, and they can't look to Eric Maynard every time things get a little rough, every time there's a little adversity. Guys have to step up. You see some stats, VCU shooting a very impressive 53% from the field and uh, obviously over 50% from the three-point line. That's, a, that's outstanding. When you're shooting over 50% uh, from the three-point arc, that's great. Nine of 17. So the Rams, uh, but they're letting Western Michigan hang around, and that's probably what's uh, eating at Anthony Grant a little bit. Yeah, you, yeah Greg, I agree. Uh, but you also got to remember this Western Michigan team is a good basketball squad. They're not, just like we talked about earlier, they're not gonna give up, they're gonna be able to break that press and they're gonna be able to score some. That Cool uh, is a very, very good player and we're probably gonna be seeing him at another level. All right, it's 63 to 51. Broncos get the ball in. Sixty-three fifty-one, six forty-five to go. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Michael Rudell with the game, with the ball, fronted by Joey Rodriguez. Rudell, ten seconds on the shot clock. Good defense by the Rams. Goes inside. That was Martel McLemore, and it looked like Terrence St. Teal had decent position, but they're going to call. They're going to call the foul on him. So that's uh, the foul's going to be there on Terrence St. Teal. So McLemore will go to the line. St. Teal's in the game along with Curse, Nixon, Rodriguez. You know, Kirill's had a, a sneaky, quiet game, but he, he's got a double double with 11 points and 11 rebounds. It's good to have him back in there. No question now. If he could sink the back end of this uh, one and one, the lead will be down to 10, which is uh, the lowest it's been since the second half started, and that's exactly where it is. It is 63 to 53 in this game. Again, VCU led 31-21 at the half. They ran out to a 21 point advantage early in the second half, and now it's down to 10 points. Maynard, baseline jumper, no good. Scramble for the rebound, and you're going to see a foul, and unfortunately, it's going to be on VCU. Yeah, that was on Curse over the back. He, he, he did it. He came over. He was trying to tip it to the grill. His second foul, and again, it hasn't been under, single, uh, in, uh, under double digits since the first half. But Western Michigan has that opportunity. See VCU, full court press. McLemore out front with Riddell, Cool, Lawson, and Ward. There's Cool coming around the screen. He gets pushed a little, and David Cool's gonna go to the line. Trying to take it in, make sure that clock gets stopped so they can get some time to, to make up some points. VCU's gotta understand that. David Cool is at the line. He had eight in the first half and now has 13 in the second half. That's 21 for the game for David Cool, who, as we mentioned, is uh, their best player. And uh, I think that just put him over 1,000 points for his career. I think so as well, yeah, he's, up, right? Yeah. So David Cool, again, you can see the kind of player he is. This kid's only a junior and already over 1,000 points in his career. He's a good player. Rams, 
fire up a three there from Joey Rodriguez who got pushed after the shot. I don't think the ref saw that. And another miss by the Rams and another opportunity for Western Michigan to cut into the lead, but instead, cool, instead of taking the open three, fires it underneath and throws the ball away. So the lead stays at eight. Again, it's the uh, smallest lead for VCU since late in the first half. And we got 5.37 left, and this is a game right now. The Rams are a bit on the ropes, and they're going to need their senior to take over or someone else to step up. 63-55, Rams by eight. Lance Curse from deep three, goes down and comes back out. Rams can't catch a break right now. Things going Western Michigan's way. Riddell behind his back, down low to Lawson for the slam. And the lead is down to six. is getting a little rattled here. Five minutes to go as Michael Riddell slaps the floor in front of Eric Maynor. You may not want to antagonize the CAA player of the year. Lance Kirst down the lane, swatted away. You can see the VCU players besides Eric Maynard just standing in the corners. They need to really start moving around and getting open. Rams definitely lacking a little intensity or energy. Western Michigan's owning the momento, momentum. And you see Riddell kind of hanging on there to Maynard. He has done a halfway decent job on Maynard in the second half. Mainer 14 in the first half, thanks to four threes. Seven in the second half, he's got 21 for the game. He is the leading scorer. And that time, they call the foul on, what's that, illegal screen? Oh no, they called it on Mainer. I thought they may have called an illegal screen, but instead they call it on Mainer for pushing on. Him and Riddell are kind of getting into it a little bit. Maynard cannot let Riddell get in his head here. This is a critical part of the game. I agree, and he, and he just did. He just threw that elbow. It's 63-57, it's a six point game with 4.53 to go. This building has got a little quiet, Greg. You are right, Nathan, 4.50. Rams need to tighten up on D here. Riddell over to David Cool. McLemore out front, around to Gary. Gary back to Cool. Cool's the leading scorer for the Broncos in this game with 20, kicks it out to McLemore for three. No good, Bishonikov rebound over to Rodriguez. Mr. Western Michigan hasn't had too many misses in the second half, but one there. Maynard, little jump stop there, and it looks like the foul. <laughs> that was a little bit of a late whistle, but he, he got him good. Eric wasn't gonna be denied. He was gonna take that into the rack. He needs to, to, to get some points on the boards to give us a little cushion. Of course, that's what you're going to see late in games. Maynard being aggressive, taking the ball to the hoop. So now Maynard will go to the line. Maynard's five of six from the line so far, make it six of seven. He's got 22 points. He's averaging 24 and a half in the six previous games for VCU. He's trying to get above 500. They're three and three entering this game. And we're gonna see how Eric performs in these last four minutes. This is usually Eric Maynard's time to shine. So Maynard knocks them both down. Lead goes back to eight. Pressure. Lawson gets it in. You're gonna see a travel. And that is uh, a direct result of the pressure as the Rams turned up the heat. As we saw uh, Riddell do a little bit of... Um, it's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. We'll keep it here, thank you. Good job here by the stage managers. You guys are doing an excellent job. And uh, we'll keep it here, it's 4.20 left. It's funny how this game has changed, Nathan, because VCU looked like they were in position to put together a blowout tonight. They were up 21 points, even though Eric Maynard was quiet early in the second half. Joey Rodriguez stepped up, other guys stepped up, and then some way, somehow, Western Michigan chipped away, chipped away, and got this lead all the way down to six. Now it's back to eight. You know, I don't think it's as much as VCU performing poorly as it is Western Michigan bringing their, bringing their game up to where it should be. Western Michigan was not cutting to the basket. They weren't hitting their open shots. And, and you can just see they're doing what we thought that they would do at the beginning of the game. VCU shooting 49% uh, from the game, 47% from three-point land. They've made nine of 19. Early, uh, last couple of threes, though, they have misfired on. 
So the ball will be coming in underneath. Ed Nixon's gonna throw it in. Trying to find Maynard. He comes it off, and now he's got it up front. Little shake and bake, he goes baseline, loops underneath. That is classic Eric Maynard. Rack wow. that one for the highlight reel, guys. And keep them with their pressure. 25 for the senior from Rayford, North Carolina. The lead is now 10. Under four minutes to go here at the Siegel Center. Gary with a bump a little. Wow. Gary got away with a little push off there, I think. He sure did. You can see he threw out the elbow a little bit. I think the Rams wanted the call there, but they count the bucket and he will go to the line. That doesn't surprise me about Gary. You know, he hasn't been up. He, he's 15 points and seven boards a game, and, and he likes to take it to the, to the rack, and, uh, you know, he's probably their most all-around player. Absolutely. Let's uh, throw it over to uh, Kelly Lemon for uh, one more update. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Greg. As you see, I have no papers in my hand because I can talk about this off my head. We're talking about the online sale that the VCUathletic.com is having for all your Rams material. If you spend $75 or more, they're going to give you free shipping. If you spend $50 or more, you're going to get 20% off. So make sure you log on to VCUathletics.com. Buy all of the Ram merchandise for all your friends, all your family for this holiday season. Again, VCUathletics.com, the online sale, $75, um, free shipping, 20% off if you spend $50 or more. Greg, I see a pair of socks up there I'm going to get you. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. That's where I do all my shopping. All my family's got some VCU gear, even though they're, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, country of, uh, you know, a CAA rival there. But that's all right. They love the VCU gear. And we'll go to the replay here as uh, Ed Nixon gets the ball in. And you just see Eric Maynard. Look, at this point in the game, you know he's going to try to take over. And this right here, classic Maynard underneath. That is nifty right there. That's just phenomenal. Eric Maynard. I'm feeling that he's gonna he's gonna try to take over the game once again. Eric Mayner, I've got him for uh, 25 in this game. I think the the scoreboard has him for 21. I'm pretty sure he's got 25 in this game. He does. He has 25 and eight yeah. assists. Se seven, 11 from the field, four or five from three point land, and uh, again the lead is eight points. But uh, what we've got right now is uh, I believe it's Mclemore going to the line to try to complete the three-point play for Western Michigan, who's just a feisty Bronco team. They will not go away. You know, Gary, uh, Gary's got a brother plays in New Mexico that they just faced last week. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is Gary, not McLemore at the line, and he does knock it down. So Shantese Gary now has six, and the lead is seven with 345 to play in this game. Maynard over to Bradford Burgess. Nixon Pashelnikov Rodriguez also on the floor for VCU. As we look at three, just over three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this game. Maynard looks to penetrate all when it goes off the hand of Kirill Pashelnikov. You know, Coach Grant decided to take a little bit of time off the clock on that possession. Um, didn't take off quite a nit, quite a bit with uh, Grill's hands there. Absolutely, want to shorten this game now and limit the possessions if you can. Rams a seven-point edge, 3:20 to go. That's where Dell. He's kind of stuck. What's he going to do? He tries to make a little move around the back of the rim. No, Burgess with a clutch rebound. Great, great rebound by Burgess. He's he's an excellent freshman. Eric Maynard now brings it across the timeline, gets it over to Burgess. Burgess is good at handling the basketball. He did it in high school. Burgess goes down the lane. Great look to burn Kirill Pachelnikov. That was a great look and a nice finish by Special K there. Shows you exactly why Coach Grant has him in the game at this point in time. 13 now for Kirill Pachelnikov. And now they tie up Gary, another turnover. And this is another critical possession. It's a nine point lead. Maynard stopped at the foul line. The floater, another classic <laughs> Eric Maynard bucket. That shot almost hit the roof, Greg. That was such a, such a nice little floater. Oh, he has such a silky smooth touch. 27 in the game for Eric Maynard. The lead goes to 11. 
and a nice heady play there by Joey Rodriguez, who takes the charge. Immediately gets up off his rear end and heads all the way back. And now the Rams feeling a little better. Still a tight game, 2-13 to play, lead 11. But you can sense their confidence starting to come back. Eric Maynard with some clutch buckets and 27 tonight for the senior. This crowd's really getting into it as well, Greg. You also mentioned Kirill Pashelnikov, 13 points, 12 rebounds. It's got to be a career night for Kirill. And you can see here the great look by Burgess and then the finish by Pashelnikov. Back to game action. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Maynard trying to eat up some clock here. Throws it over Rodriguez. They're not in any rush. They want to shorten this game. Rodriguez dribbling, and they're going to call a foul. And that should send Joey Rodriguez to the line, and it will. That was a little bit of a late call. I wasn't sure what happened there, Greg. I think maybe he got a little bit bailed out a little bit. Well, with an with 11-point lead and under two minutes to go, it's no surprise to see the Broncos fouling here. Kind of getting to the point of the game where they need to start trading maybe three for two. Rodriguez goes to the line. Joey, his first three throw of the night. And he knocks it down. He has 14. There's three Rams in double figures tonight, of course. Eric Meaner leading the way with 27. J-Rod has 14, and Kirill Pashelnikov, 13. It's a pretty good balance. It hasn't been that way all season. It's been mostly uh, Eric Maynard with 20-plus points and everybody else with about eight. Notch another for Joey. The lead is 13 with 142 to go. Broncos in desperate need of a bucket. Cool. Good defense on him by Burgess. Ball fake and then kind of a shuffle. That is a tough call there. It looked like Sean T. Gary shuffled his feet a little bit and fell to the ground. Instead, they're going to call a foul on uh, Nixon. They calling that on? They're calling it on. Okay. Michelle to call for Nixon, either one, but it's going to send Gary to the line. He has six points. He knocks down the front end to one and one. Certainly the last thing the Rams want to do is allow the Broncos to score while the clock is stopped. Exactly. From the free throw line. So that's Gary at the line. He has seven. Trying to make it eight here with a minute and a half to go at the Siegel Center, and he does. So he has eight in the game, and the lead is 11 with 90 seconds to go. Look, Pressure here from the Broncos. No surprise. Try to, yep. Just as we expected. They're going to try to foul Joey before he can get the ball to Eric. Where do they normally foul? How long would they wait to go before they foul there, Nate? Once they, once they get, will they let the Rams make one, two passes before they automatic foul? Well, that's a good question. It's actually just really kind of depends on who has the ball and how much time they have. In this case, they wanted to keep it out of Eric Maynard's hands because in clutch, he, he hits those quite a bit. Um, Joey Rodriguez, on the other hand, is, is a pretty good free throw shooter himself. So if, if they can try to, to maybe hand it off to, to Kirill or someone like that that doesn't have such a good percentage, they'll try to allow it, but simply there just isn't enough time. So they're going to try to foul whoever gets the ball on the inbounds. Rodriguez, perfect so far from the charity stripe. He'll make it four for four. Joey Rodriguez now has 17 on the night to go with 13 for Kirill Pashelnikov and 27, a game high 27 from Eric Maynard. 115 to go. Rams by 13. Michael Rudell off the foot of Whitfield, and look at Nixon get on the floor and hustle. Gets it ahead to Rodriguez, who clicks it back there to Maynard, and they're gonna pull up a little bit, try to take some time off the clock, and you've gotta figure the Broncos got a foul. And that was nearly intentional. Heady play by Maynard. I think his instincts is to take it right to the rack, but uh, I think he was very smart on pulling it back, and uh, you know, that may just about do it there, Greg. There's one exactly one minute left in the game with Eric Maynard going to the line and the Rams by 13. So Eric Maynard right now staring down the possibility of 
back-to-back 30-point -back games? Oh, yeah. and Goodness. And, and Eric, I think, is he's in the top 10 of scoring in the NCAA Division One right now. And well, this is only going to move him up the move him up just a tad, move him up a little. Certainly no surprise for the Rams fans because they've come to expect that in the scene from Rayford, North Carolina. But I'll tell you what, what's really good is that we've had these other players step up today and step up in clutch time when, when it started to get a little bit tense. Yeah, Eric Maynard, he had 18 against New Mexico. And then, of course, he had a big game, an overtime loss to East Carolina where he had 35. So he's had 35, 18, 31, and now 28 with a chance to look at 29. You know, 15 of 16 from the stripe tonight for the BC Rams. That is exceptional. Exceptional. That's got to make Anthony Grant pleased. 77 62. It's 15 with under a minute to go, and it's desperation time for the Broncos. They just got to fire up some shots. Drew's off the front of the rim. Rebound for Shelnikov. He's going to get fouled. And that puts him at 13 points and 13 rebounds for the game. Very strong effort tonight for Kirill Pashelnikov. There's only two juniors on this team, Pashelnikov and TJ Gwynn, and we all know there's only one senior, Eric Maynard. It's a very young team. Going to see a lot of these faces for years to come at the Siegel Center. Pashelnikov goes to the line. He's uh, three of three from the stripe and make it four of four. So Pashelnikov, 14. And again, you can just not underestimate how important it's been to see the Rams hit most of their free throws. 15 of 16, and they're going to take Eric Maynard out of the game. So he's going to come up a point shy of 30, unfortunately. That would have been nice. He could have had back-to-back 30-point -back games, three of his last four. Uh, it's not going to hurt his average, though, guys, right? 29 for the game for Eric Maynard. No, and that was a nice ovation by the crowd as well to, to, to tell Eric what a great job he's done today. Absolutely. He uh, certainly didn't carry the Rams, though. They needed uh, the 17 they got from Joey Rodriguez, the 14 they got from Kirill Pashonikov. Heck, they got eight from Larry Sanders. And now they're just kind of running things down. They're going to have to take a shot here with the difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 20 seconds, and there's... Uh, Coming now, 15 on the game clock, 10 on the shot clock. So at some point, they're going to have to run a play here. Five on the shot clock. Burgess, gonna looks like he might just do it all himself. He throws it up. It's blocked, goes out of bounds, and that will be a shot clock violation. But with just 5.4 on the clock, the Rams know they have this one in the bag as the Broncos get one final look. Riddell brings it across. No need to foul. He fires one up, it's no good. And the Rams will put this one in the win column. 79 to 62 over Western Michigan. So the Rams improve to four and three on the season and three and oh at home. We're gonna be hearing from Coach Grant in just a moment. Kelly Lemon awaiting to uh, talk to the coach after he finishes shaking, shaking hands. And certainly it wasn't easy. It looked at one point like the Rams may Give the hometown crowd a blowout. They were up 21. Western Michigan got it all the way down to six, but the Rams still finished strong. 79-62, a 17-point win tonight for the hometown Rams, who again moved to four and three. Coach Grant, it looks like, is uh, gonna catch up here with uh, Kelly Lemon in just a moment. And uh, also may hear from uh, Eric Maynard again, a game high. 29 points. Here's Kelly Lemon with Coach Grant. Coach, you stress that you like the, the defensive play in the first half. Ups and downs in the second half. Talk about the second half of play. I was disappointed in the second half with our defensive effort. You know, it's a characteristic of a young team. We got a lead there, and we, we let up. We coasted a little bit. They're a good basketball team. They cut into the lead. They made it a very close game. Uh, you know, it's a lesson learned. I'm one that I prefer to learn lessons when we win. So, you know, we'll look at it. We got a quick turnaround. We play against Saturday. Good luck against William and Mary. Thank you. All right, and I think, Kelly, you're going to go ahead and get uh, Joey Rodriguez, too. So if you want to, yeah, we'll uh, stick with Kelly, and she'll get uh, Joey Rodriguez. Go ahead, Kelly. Joey, career high, 17 points tonight. Coach is looking for that other that other scorer on the, on the court. How are you stepping up and transitioning to that play? Uh, just being confident. You know, I'm getting the ball on the wing, and they're leaving me open because they're helping Eric so much. So when I get the ball, I'm just confident and uh, making shots right now. Well, congratulations on your career high. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Kelly Lemon 
with Coach Grant and Joey Rodriguez. And uh, yeah, they needed uh, Joey Rodriguez to step up tonight. You look here at some uh, stats. VCU shooting a uh, very strong 51% for the game. And you see the 95% from the free throw line. My goodness, they were just uh, so accurate. 18 of 19. And then to shoot 47% from the field, Nate, they had a good job. But if you heard Coach Grant, he was unhappy with the way they played defense, with the defensive intensity in the second half. And that was when they saw Western Michigan have a 21-point lead go all the way down to six. Yes, I agree. Um, he was a little bit upset, but as you hear him, heard him say, he also stated that, uh, you know, they're a tough team. The, the Broncos are a tough team, and they came back and made it tough for him. So while the, the Rams did have a lapse in defense, I, th I would attribute that more to their youth than to, to anything else. It, the Broncos are a good, good basketball team. They, they absolutely are. They showed a lot of heart there as they uh, came back to uh, cut that lead down. But again, Eric Maynard has really had a, a great stretch here, as we mentioned, uh, in that East Carolina game, which was unfortunately an overtime loss there. He had 35, and then, of course, they go to New Mexico. I mean, they, go, they play New Mexico down in Cancun. He has 18, and then in the game against Vanderbilt, he has 31, and then 29 here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, that's what they expect from the senior from North Carolina. But as they knew, heading into this season, it wasn't all going to be about Eric Maynard. They needed to find the second and third scorers that were going to help the Rams this season. I agree. And almost every conversation that, uh, that I've had with the, with the coaching staff and yourself is who is that player going to be that's going to step up. And I think maybe we're starting to find who that player is. And that may be Joey Rodriguez. It, it just took him a few games to, to get into sync. But that's three solid games that he's had a shooting that, that you know, if he can just keep carrying it on into the CAA, this is a special team. Absolutely. Joey Rodriguez, of course, in double digits. Also, Kirill Pashelnikov, who I believe had 13 points. No, 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 I'm sorry. He had 15 points and 13 rebounds. So Kirill Pashelnikov, certainly, he's a kid who we hear so much about, works so hard, and uh, certainly he stepped up his game tonight. Oh, Kirill something special tonight. You know, Kirill has a problem with, with his confidence sometimes, and, and these type of games are really going to help uh, Kirill with his confidence. He... He did so well. Eric found him the ball, and, and he put it in the bucket, and he was pulling down boards, and he was running the court. I mean, I can't say enough about Kirill. This is a career game for him, and, and I hope we see some good things out of him the rest of the year. Yeah, he's a high-energy guy, and, of course, sometimes that high energy gets him in a little bit of trouble. I think he gets a little over-exuberant maybe out there on the floor. But, uh, you know, I think ultimately – Head coach Anthony Grant is going to love that kind of intensity. But again, as we mentioned, he was a little disappointed with the defensive pressure there in the second half that allowed a 21-point lead to go all the way down. You see Joey Rodriguez there feeding it again to Kirill Pashelnikov, who had himself a whale of a game tonight here in front of the uh, home crowd at the Siegel Center as the Rams improved to a 3-0 now at home, 4-3 on the year. 